So can you even see the Excel icon on your toolbar? First, let's make sure you can. And do you waste time doing this, hovering over the Excel icon to see the open Excel files? Well, you can change this setting in your Windows settings so you can see all the open Excel files at the same time. Keyboard shortcuts are so important for productivity in Excel. Use the Alt Tab shortcut to switch between windows rather than that annoying mouse work. So you're probably familiar with this view of Excel files. Yes, you need to enable editing to get into the file. You can do that using a keyboard shortcut too. Alt F I E on the Windows PC means you can access the file without using the mouse at all. So now we're in the file. Did you know you can use this option to view the the same file in multiple windows at the same time. Yes, this is incredibly useful for things like formula building across sheets and yes, multiple screens certainly does help with this kind of thing. At the time of shooting, we're coming up to Christmas, so why not ask for one for Christmas? <laughs> so the easiest way to manage data in Excel is using Excel tables. I recommend you use them and then get used to using the table references for things like formula building. Now, a big advantage of Excel tables is you can instantly format a data set. But what I do is I use this alternate row formatting and then I put a color of my choice uh, just on the header row at the top to give it a more distinctive feel. And so we're not just using the generic table formatting in Excel. Yes, I call this a one color color scheme, but I also recommend you spend the time developing your own color scheme based on your company or organization branding. I do this on all our Excel projects. I save the color scheme to a sheet in the back of the file, and then I can very quickly copy paste formats wherever I need them. So if you're anything like me, you will love an Excel dashboard, but what's the quickest way to build a user-friendly and visually appealing Excel dashboard? Well, you might not like the answer because pivot tables. Pivot tables are the easiest way to do this. Once we've got a pivot table in the file, we can easily put in features like slicers, uh, timelines and charts to create beautiful dashboards. And in the video description below, I've put a link to a 10 minute video where I walk you through this process step by step from beginner level. But if you're like Chris, I really don't like pivot tables. I feel your pain. So Excel's little known data analysis formulae such as DSUM are a good alternative. We've got a video about that too. The link's in the video description. I'll see you there after this video. Hi guys, it's Chris here. I just want to say thanks for watching. I'm the founder of Tiger Spreadsheet Solutions and I've been struggling for the past 10, 12, 15 years to really master Excel. And these are the best tips that I can give you. And just to let you know, the best follow-up videos that we've got, I've personally arranged in the video description below. So make sure this is the start, not the end of your Excel learning journey. I'd love to help you with that. So after this video, join me again in one of the videos below. I'll see you there. So we've all had to do those nasty data cleansing jobs in Excel, right? Where you have to go through a data set and change spelling mistakes, things like that. Well, the truth is you don't need to do those jobs if you can validate data. Yes, data validation is such an important thing in Excel. So at the basic level, make sure you can build a drop down menu. This is going to save you so much time in the long run. Yes, you can enter values to the spreadsheet to display in the drop down menu, but the quick way I do it is just to type these values into the data validation dialog box directly. And then also get to know some of the other data validation options. You've got numerical options, some text options. You can ensure a date goes into a cell, for example. So these will save you time too. But if you need just yes or no in a cell, I don't recommend data validation. I would recommend using Excel's checkboxes, a nice interactive feature. So what about formula building? A big part of Excel practice. Well, I've only got one tip but it's a big tip. That's to use the F2 key when you're building formulae in Excel. And just try it yourself. Build a formula, hit the F2 key, and just notice in the bottom left corner of Excel, Excel is actually changing modes. So this will allow you to switch between moving up and down the formula in order to edit it, and then actually selecting cells in the spreadsheet. And for me, it's meant I'm now able to just use the keyboard to build formulae even tricky formally, so this tip should save you some time. Now, the next tip is to expand your Excel formula vocabulary by using more dynamic array formulae. Now, they sound scary, don't they? Dynamic array formulae, so 
what a dynamic array formula does it, it's is it returns an output that can increase or decrease in size according to what's going on in the data set so i recommend you get started with the unique formula the unique formula so the unique formula will instantly deduplicate values in a data set and output them to a dynamic array now that dynamic array you can reference using a hashtag at the end of a normal cell reference in Excel. So start using those hashtag references and start getting real value out of dynamic arrays in Excel. So what about collecting data in Excel? Let's suppose you had to get some relatively simple information from your colleagues. How would you go about doing that? Well, you might say, Chris, that's easy. I'll just email an Excel file to everybody. They could fill out the Excel file and then send it back to me. So I'm suggesting not just for your productivity, but also for your sanity and for the sanity of your colleagues that, you know, you don't need to do that anymore. It takes so much time to consolidate multiple Excel files it's prone to error too. So the alternative is Excel Forms. Excel Forms so good for collecting that basic data. They look good. You can use them on your phone. You can use them on your iPad, on your PC, and the data is instantly consolidated in the background. Our beginner video, the link is in the video description below. I'll see you there after this video. Okay, so let's move on to some more conceptual and perhaps fundamental Excel tips. Less exciting perhaps, but the truth is these ones are really going to make the difference to your Excel productivity. So hang around until the end of the video. The first one is stop creating so many Excel files. Yes, the projects we're engaged with here at Tiger Spreadsheet Solutions almost always involve situations where there's too many Excel files. So take a look at your Excel file setup. Can you have fewer files? Can you consolidate files together? Can you have fewer worksheets in a file? Because the truth is, if you have the minimal or close to minimal number of files, you don't need so many techniques. You don't need so many formulae. There's much less to go wrong. So a more lean and mean approach, if you like, with the number of files and worksheets that you're using. This is the number one power tip that could make the most difference to your Excel productivity. So are you using AI in your Excel practice? Well, clearly there's massive productivity gains to be made with AI. Now, what's going on in Excel? Well, we have Copilot built into Excel. It's a paid option, 20 pounds, $20 a month, but could be worth it. So get to know your AI tool, whether it's Copilot or something out of Excel, but you have to know now, this tip as well, which is what is AI good at and what AI is not so good at. So let me give you a brutally simplistic summary of this. AI is good at one-off tasks, one-off data analyses. So your boss says to you, can you quickly uh, do some charts for this data and do a quick presentation? That is where, where AI is going to really help for those one-off jobs. So AI is less useful if you want to create an Excel tool that you're going to use repeatedly every day, every week, every month. You want to drop some data into a file and then have some kind of output, output, maybe some data analysis. AI is not so good at that. So definitely get into AI, but crucially understand what it's for. The next tip is to start automating tasks in Excel. Yes, I think this is really the biggest lever that Excel gives us to save time and money. So tip one is to start automating. Tip two is to understand which is the best automation tool for you. Now, I can't explain this in detail here, so check out our video in the video description below the five levels of Excel automation. It will help you understand which tool is best for you. The link's in the video description below. I'll see you after this video. But if you're asking me, well, Chris, just give me something now. You've got to understand, are you working in the cloud or are you working on desktop Excel? If you're working in the cloud, we're thinking about things like Power Automate and Office Script. If you're working on desktop Excel, then things like Power Query and VBA are gonna work better for you. And the final tip is get started with Power Query. Get started with Power Query on Excel desktop. It's the easiest way to start automating your tasks in Excel. Once again, our beginner video is in the video description below. I'll see you there after this video. So what about a total conceptual framework for your Excel practice? So whatever Excel job you got, you'll know exactly what to do. How about that? Well, firstly, 
My tip is avoid formula obsession. There's so much more than formally in Excel and the truth is formally only help with quite a narrow bunch of jobs in Excel. So have more awareness of the other stuff in Excel. And then take this tip away. You're only ever doing one of four things in Excel. You're only ever doing one of four things, data management, data analysis, modeling, or automation. Now these four applications are actually quite distinct and each one has its own bundle of tools. So understand what you're trying to do. That allows you to select the right tool. And finally, get this conceptual framework written down. And the good news is we've got you covered. You can download the exact toolkit that I'm using for my company on our projects, on our Excel development projects. It's built around those four applications of Excel so you can understand what the applications are and select exactly the tool you need so you're not going down those Excel rabbit holes and you're able to dramatically boost your Excel productivity.